Hi, welcome to ESI 521 Pattern Generation at the Nanoscale. I'm Professor Uk Jun Nam at the Pennsylvania State University. So uh, today, uh, lecture number four, and uh, this is the uh, optical lithotherapy part one. So uh, uh, today, uh, we're going to uh, talk about uh, optical lithotherapy and then uh, kind of a little bit, I will give you a little bit overview and then uh, we will uh, talk about uh, some of the terminology in optics. So uh, what's the measure of the good uh, lithotherapy? Um, the good lithotherapy should provide a high resolution and then a precise alignment accuracy and then uh, it also should provide a uh, very high throughput. So um, the high resolution uh, right now, uh, based on the uh, technology those kind of microelectronic industries are using, uh, we are in the uh, range of smaller than 20 nanometer, and then uh, they are following Moore's law and then uh, they just keep uh, pushing to uh, achieve a much smaller feature size. And then the precise alignment is needed uh, when you uh, just keep uh, stack your designs from the previous uh, design. And then for the advanced therapy technologies, uh, those kind of uh, alignment margin, uh, the alignment margin is a mismatch between uh, one design to the other is uh, smaller than 20 nanometer and then as to the throughput uh, those kind of micro electron industries based on uh, whatever uh, current wafer size right now uh, people use 12 inch uh, silicon wafers and people wants to have a uh, throughput uh, which is an at least uh, more than 100 uh, wafers per hour to be processed. So uh, that's the kind of a throughput uh, people are looking for. So uh, this is a little bit old uh, roadmap, but uh, this one is kind of very interesting to see. So uh, in 2007, uh, the International Technology Roadmap for Semiconductors, uh, they are kind of a non-profit organization. Uh, at the time, uh, there, uh, the technology was around 65 nanometer technology, so smallest feature size uh, people can achieve for the uh, commercial line, for the commercial uh, microprocessor uh, fabrication, uh, people just, the smallest feature size was about 65 nanometer. And when they expected the future uh, from 2007, uh, this is the uh, 193 nanometer uh, scanner uh, projection printer uh, was the uh, current um, lithotherapy tool and then they just said uh, this tool only can go down to the uh, feature size for the 45 nanometer and from this point uh, smaller than to achieve this kind of a much smaller uh, feature size uh, there are other kind of uh, advanced therapy technique should be used. But uh, interestingly, uh, right now uh, we are at the 22 nanometer uh, technology and then uh, this scanner is still used uh, to achieve this kind of a small uh, feature size. Uh, we will discuss about this uh, later of the uh, lectures and then uh, not today but a couple lectures later but uh, we will just discuss about why uh, people still use uh, this scanner and how people can achieve or improve uh, this existing scanner to achieve to this kind of a 20 nanometer, 22 nanometer in feature size. So why optical lithotherapy is the preferred technology in uh, microelectronic industries? Uh, there are three major reasons why and the first one is on um, uh, this technology is very reliable in another word uh, it generates very low defect and then uh, this technology is uh, very reproducible so um, it doesn't uh, 
So uh, it does not have uh, uh, many kind of a defect or any kind of an errors uh, from a uh, wafer to wafer. And then uh, this is the another kind of a big uh, consideration, high throughput. So uh, uh, it uh, keeps uh, kind of a producing those kind of a wafers. Kind of a, it can handle more than one wafers per hour uh, without any problem. But uh, as you can see from this. Uh, Grabs um, as the technologies kind of uh, developed uh, to achieve much smaller kind of a feature size. This kind of a exposure tool price is also getting uh, more expensive. So right now, uh, it is uh, if somebody wants to buy a full set of the all the accessories and everything, uh, each of the single tool cost uh, more than um, hundred million dollars. So, uh, because of this kind of a, a very expensive exposure tools and then um, a mask set and uh, all those kind of a things, um, uh, the, the therapy process itself uh, takes more than 35% of the entire chip manufacturing cost. And then uh, as this um, technology, we are pursuing much uh, smaller uh, feature size, uh, it is kind of getting more complicated. So uh, for developing the therapy uh, technologies, uh, people should develop a new tool and new photosensitive material, in another word, which is a photo resist. And then uh, the, for the tool development, people develop a new light source and then new optics for the uh, uh, lenses and mirrors. So uh, there are uh, all these kind of a development should go uh, together to achieve those kind of a final technologies. So uh, it is not a simple but very complicated process. So uh, today let's talk about uh, what kind of uh, exposure systems are, are available. So for the optical lithography, there are three types of uh, exposure systems are available. So uh, one is the contact the therapy, the other one is a proximity, and then the third type is the projection type uh, exposure system. So uh, uh, this is a picture of the uh, uh, exposure system. Uh, in another word, we call that as an aligner. And this uh, exposure tool, uh, there are two different models that I'm showing you, but uh, this one aligner can do either uh, contact or proximity therapy. So uh, this is the example of the contact therapy. So uh, uh, in that, this is the configuration of the contact therapy tool. So we have a, a light source, and then we have an uh, optics, and then uh, we have a photo mask, and then a photo resist, or coded on substrate. So this specific uh, therapy, contact therapy, the name originated from uh, this configuration. For this therapy, the photo mask directly contact the photo resist. So uh, we will talk about this kind of optical effect. So uh, since this uh, photo mask directly contact to the photo resist, we have a much less uh, diffraction effect. Uh, we will talk about this effect in the later of uh, today's lecture. So uh, since uh, this therapy has a, a much less diffraction effect, so uh, it provide a uh, relatively good resolution. And then um, this lithography uh, use one times uh, image transfer. So uh, there's no lenses between photo mask and then photo regis. So that is why the feature size on the photo mask just transfer to the uh, photo regis. Uh, with the same size. So if we have a uh, uh, 100 micrometer by 100 micrometer, in feature size, this kind of square uh, patterns in the photo mask, uh, this 
parents when it was transferred when it is transferred to the photoregist uh, it should be the same uh, since uh, this uh, mask size and then uh, the uh, substrate size in most of the cases are the same so uh, with the one exposure uh, we can finish uh, we can transfer the patterns to a one a single uh, substrate at one time of the exposure so it is kind of fast and relatively simple and then inexpensive way and then but uh, this uh, technique has uh, uh, some weakness and that is um, since this photo mask always kind of uh, touching the photo register, so some of the photo register, uh, can contaminate uh, the um, photo mask and then uh, it also if there is uh, some kind of particles on the uh, photo register or substrate uh, when we just make the photo mask touch the surface of the photo register it can cause some kind of a physical uh, damage on the photo mask so uh, that's that's possible so that's the kind of weakness of uh, this uh, therapy so uh, proximity lithotherapy is the uh, the configuration of the tool is the same, and as I uh, mentioned before, the same aligner can uh, do uh, this proximity lithotherapy with the same kind of uh, mask set and then same kind of uh, regist. So major differences difference between uh, contact lithotherapy and then. Um, Proximity therapy is um, everything is the same, but we can put some kind of a space between the photo mask and then photo regist. So uh, since uh, this photo mask does not directly touch the photo regist, so uh, it will have a uh, less chance of uh, mask damage and contamination. But uh, this configuration of the uh, tool is kind of a very similar to the contact therapy. So uh, the image transfer is uh, uh, the same size, 1x image transfer. And then uh, this is almost the same as the contact therapy. So it's kind of a fast. It needs a one exposure uh, to cover entire substrate and then relatively simple and inexpensive. But uh, this spacing between the photo mask and then photo regist uh, will make um, diffraction effect and then uh, this kind of a diffraction effect uh, will uh, sacrifice the resolution so in terms of the resolution just to simply uh, compare to with the contact therapy uh, this proximity therapy uh, offers uh, much um, kind of a little bit worse resolution so uh, that's the weakest point of this proximity uh, therapy so uh, projection therapy is the most popular among that optical therapy and then uh, actually this uh, projection uh, therapy is the uh, technique used for the uh, all those kind of microelectronic industries uh, for producing those kind of uh, memory chips and then a uh, microprocessor chip. So uh, uh, this picture shows that uh, projection type of the exposure system. So this is a system and then um, there is a shutter uh, here. So uh, it does not show inside, but it has, uh, I, I will just go over the uh, configuration of these tools in the next slide and then uh, here is the uh, computer, uh, the operator is kind of uh, uh, operating. So uh, uh, projection lithotherapy, uh, it has a, a photo mask in between uh, uh, this kind of optical systems and then the lenses. This is the lens. So um, actually, uh, People using this uh, projection therapy, uh, this is the photo mask. It, it looks like almost the same as the photo mask used for the uh, projection or contact therapy, 
But people call uh, this photo mask used for the projection therapy uh, more frequently as a radical soul. So uh, uh, the major difference is uh, this projection therapy uh, compared with the other uh, previous two therapy uh, technology is um, it uses lenses. So uh, it always uses about four to ten times uh, bigger um, feature size in the um, uh, radical. So uh, if you have a uh, 10 micrometer by 10 micrometer square on your radical, on your uh, substrate, uh, the image will be uh, about will be a one micrometer by one micrometer feature size uh, when you use the lenses uh, which will shrink down uh, this feature size on the radicals down to the uh, this uh, feature size to the photoregist. So uh, when you have uh, some kind of a defect on your kind of a patterns, one good advantage is uh, that kind of a defective area also 10 times shrink down. So that's another kind of a good news. But in that case of that, most of the cases, uh, people uh, repair that uh, defected area using the focused ion beam technology. So uh, this is the one of the uh, technique people can repair that. But uh, this kind of uh, image reduction capability is also uh, very good. So it uses the uh, lenses. So uh, and then it can just re reduce the uh, feature size. It offers kind of a pretty good resolution compared to uh, the uh, contact and proximity uh, therapy. And then uh, it also has an advantage of those kind of proximity therapy can offer. So uh, this radical does not touch directly to the photoregist. So uh, uh, it has a much less chance for the damage and contamination. But uh, this uh, tool uh, uses a uh, uh, kind of a series of the lenses to uh, reduce the images. So uh, the cost for the uh, system is much more expensive than uh, those kind of aligner. So um, let's uh, talk about uh, some of the optics terminology. So uh, um, there are uh, two optics. One is a geo geometrical, and then the other one is a physical optics. So in geometric optics, uh, the light is um, almost like a rays. So when we uh, describe the light in the geometric optics, we just uh, express it as a, a straight line. But uh, as um, those kind of feature size is getting smaller and smaller, and then approaches to the, uh, uh, the length of the wavelengths of the light, uh, the visible wavelength is between about 300 to the about 1,000 nanometer in range. And then uh, for the uh, microprocessor chips or memory chips, as I showed you in the previous slide, we are talking about smaller than 65 nanometer and then right now is at uh, 20 nanometer. So as this kind of a uh, feature size is kind of a closer to the uh, wavelengths of the light or smaller, uh, this physical optics uh, becomes more important. So in physical optics, uh, we uh, the light behave more like a uh, wave. So uh, uh, we are more this kind of a wave effect of the nature of the light is uh, more, in, more important. So, uh, diffraction is one of the effect. So, uh, in the free space, those kind of a light are just uh, coming as a plane wave. 
So let's say this uh, read as a, a slit. So as this kind of a plane wave uh, pass this kind of a small slit, uh, this light started to bending. So uh, you can see uh, this kind of a, uh, how those kind of a plane waves are, are changed. So you will see some areas uh, much clearer kind of uh, wave patterns you are seeing and in between uh, there is almost uh, uh, nothing kind of uh, those kind of uh, uh, intensity of the waves are uh, disappeared so uh, uh, we call that kind of uh, uh, a phenomenon as an, an interference so uh, uh, that is an um, that is due to the constructive or destructive uh, wave. So uh, when those kind of uh, waves, uh, two or more are uh, present, when uh, the pace of those kind of waves are uh, the same, those kind of intensity of the waves are become bigger or stronger. But uh, if those kind of uh, waves out of pace, it just uh, work as a destructive way, so uh, uh, those kind of intensities uh, will disappear. So that is why uh, in some areas uh, we are seeing very strong uh, waves and at some point we don't see any kind of uh, intensities. So. Um, when we are just seeing those kind of waves at the imaging plane, we will see uh, this kind of a periodic uh, bright and dark and bright and dark uh, images. So uh, uh, this kind of a periodicity is kind of very close to this uh, formula. So uh, the theta is this, and then uh, the lambda is the wavelength of the light, and then A is the, uh, uh, the opening of the slit, and M represent, here is the M1, here is the M2, and here is the M3. So, uh, we can just call that this one is the um, first diffracted pattern, second diffracted pattern, and third diffracted pattern. So why this kind of uh, uh, relationship, the, the opening size, wavelengths, and then um, uh, those kind of uh, number of the different kind of uh, diffractions are important. So uh, uh, this is the kind of uh, intensity at the uh, imaging plane. So let's say uh, we just fixed um, all the other parameters, like um, um, used fixed the wavelength as a one single wavelength, and then um, just bearing the uh, width of uh, the the the. the opening size only, if then uh, as the opening size is kind of a getting smaller, uh, this kind of a diffraction uh, is kind of a getting bigger. Uh, in this uh, experiment, uh, the wavelength is uh, 436 nanometer, and then um, it uses in it used this kind of uh, three different kind of uh, opening size. So uh, as the opening size, um, when uh, opening size is a uh, two micrometer, that is uh, about uh, five times bigger than the uh, wavelength. If then uh, the diffraction effect is kind of a pretty uh, small, so that is why you have a very straight line and then the, the, the distribution from uh, the, the image is kind of a, almost kind of a very small. But uh, as the openings is kind of uh, getting smaller right now, one micrometer, which is on about two times of the wavelength, 
uh, those kind of uh, diffraction effect is kind of getting bigger. And then uh, for the uh, 0.5 micrometer, which is close to the uh, uh, wavelength, the diffraction effect is kind of much bigger. Uh, we can also have the similar kind of effect as we fix the other uh, parameters the same. So uh, we just fix the uh, size of openings and then uh, for the next uh, kind of experiment we can change the wavelength. So uh, that is uh, the same as uh, the same experiment in terms of uh, we are just varying the ratio between uh, light wavelength and then the openings of the uh, slit. So uh, as we uh, used a uh, shorter wavelength, uh, those kind of uh, uh, lateral spread of this kind of a beam is kind of a much smaller. And then uh, this is the same as when we used a much uh, bigger ratio uh, between the uh, this light wavelengths versus that aperture openings. So uh, why uh, let's talk about uh, why uh, this lateral uh, we are we are caring about this uh, lateral uh, spread out. Um, so in uh, going back to uh, this uh, single slit diffractions, in ideal world, if we have this much of the openings, we want to have in the image plane, we want to have the same kind of an, um, intensities kind of a transferred to the uh, photo register. So we can just have this much of, if this is a positive uh, photo register, uh, we want to remove this much. But if this kind of a diffraction effect is kind of a very big, and then if those kind of uh, lateral spread out is this much, if then we have this much of openings which we do not want, it is kind of too big compared to what we want to have in our photo mask. And let's say this can be a photo mask. So uh, uh, the, this one can be a uh, image plane. Imaging plane can be your photo register. So in the case of that, let's say uh, uh, this opening is a uh, one micrometer, and then you want to achieve this kind of a one micrometer diameter of the holes. So you draw a uh, one micrometer. Um, holes in your photo mask, but if the uh, diffraction is kind of uh, too big, and then if this one is kind of uh, this much, it could be a uh, much bigger than one micrometer and can be a two micrometer. So that's what you don't want to have. And another problem is, um, let's say you have an even evenly spacing kind of uh, um, openings. So like an you have a, uh, uh, this is the slit, and you have a uh, one micrometer openings, and then you have a uh, one micrometer spacing, and then you have uh, another one micrometer of the uh, openings. In the case of that, if the lateral spread out is kind of uh, too big, and then it is kind of uh, bigger, if then, instead of you are having those kind of two isolated patterns, uh, you can have just one single whole pattern. So this is that kind of a scenario. So uh, in this kind of a specific example, uh, you will have that kind of uh, evenly spaced openings. But uh, one um, kind of a intensity of the uh, kind of a light uh, coming through this and then the other one coming through this is so close 
So uh, the resulting uh, uh, spectrum, the intensity of the spectrum, what uh, photoregister singing is this one solid um, intensity of the light. So uh, in this case of that, uh, there is no, uh, it is not resolvable, you cannot get any resolvable images out of this kind of uh, uh, configuration. So uh, in this kind of a scenario, instead of you have these two open structures, it just making one big uh, openings. So in this case of that, uh, if we cannot control anything like um, uh, wavelengths, actually we will uh, talk about uh, more about this in the, during the next lecture. But in this case of that, the only choice uh, we have to achieve these two openings is just to simply put uh, more spacing between the two openings. And then this is uh, very closely related with um, uh, the final resolution of a uh, lithography technique can achieve. Uh, there is uh, uh, some other uh, terms and terminologies. So uh, scattering is on another kind of a very uh, important term. So uh, uh, the scattering is on, uh, when the incident light uh, hit a material. Uh, this kind of uh, uh, electromagnetic radi radiation is kind of re-emitted from uh, those kind of initial uh, heating. So uh, uh, it normally has this kind of a random uh, re-emission. So we call this as an uh, scattering. And then uh, this is a, a very important uh, for the uh, photo when the light hit the photoregist. And then there is another two terms, which is on reflection and refraction. So when light strikes a uh, kind of interface, this is an air and then this is a one material, which can be a, could be a transparent material or photoregist. In the case of that, uh, the light uh, there is uh, some kind of a scattering, and then those kind of a, some of the scattered light just uh, coming backward. In the case of that, uh, we call that uh, this kind of a light as a reflected light, or this phenomenon as a reflection. And the refraction is on, uh, when the light just uh, uh, get into that material, and then uh, this kind of a light will be banned, uh, depends on the dielectric constant of uh, this material. And in the case of that, we call that as um, a refraction of this kind of a uh, scattering phenomena. And then uh, when uh, we uh, expose the light to the photoregist, uh, this is the uh, light uh, passed through the photo mask. And when it is the photoregist, there are a lot of kind of scattering is happening. And then some of the uh, light kind of reflected uh, from the bottom. So uh, it can just increase the width based on uh, these openings of the photo mask, but the, the degree of the reflection and then degree of the scattering can make the final resulting patterns much bigger. And then this is kind of a very uh, sensitive to the uh, uh, sensitivity of the photoregist. And then uh, this sensitivity will be also discussed during the uh, next lectures. So uh, today uh, we uh, talked about some of the optics terminology um, used for the um, photolithography. So uh, uh, this is the summary. So we talked about diffraction, scattering, interference, and reflection and refraction. And then we also talked about uh, three different kind of a configuration of the optical exposure systems. And then they are 
contact proximity and projection systems. And projection system is the most popular uh, form of the uh, tools, and then uh, it is used for the microelectronic industries to produce those kind of memory and microprocessor chips. And then um, the major reason why uh, this uh, pro uh, technique is kind of used for that kind of uh, uh, commercial production is um, it provides excellent resolution and then less uh, contamination and damages. And then another uh, thing is um, uh, people call the photo mask used for this kind of uh, technology as a radical. Uh, people normally call, instead of the projection system, uh, people normally call this type of the exposure system like a stepper and then a projection scanner or projection printer. So uh, uh, next lecture, uh, we, we are going to talking about how we are using uh, this kind of uh, terms of the optics uh, and this kind of parameters to enhance the resolution and what is the kind of a controversial um, issues we have to, uh, just enhancing those kind of a resolution of this optical lithography. Okay, thank you and see you later.